Hello everyone on YouTube. A while back I posted a video about doing self-injections, uh, but unfortunately it wasn't a very good quality video due to the camera that I was using, so I thought that I would do another one uh, while sitting in my boxer briefs, which is a little bit weird, but we'll just get over that. So today I'm going to do another example of doing self-injections. I know that can be very scary to do self-injections. Uh, sometimes, especially when you first begin, you may notice that after you inject uh, and you pull out the needle, a spurt of blood follows it, then you think, oh my god, what, what happened? Did I just like puncture my vein? Am I going to bleed out? Am I going to die? Uh, but in reality, you probably just hit a tiny capillary, so that's why it's really important when you inject uh, after you pour, pull the needle out to apply pressure and massage your muscle, and that also helps to spin still oil within there. Uh, so I, th I just thought I'd do this just to help ease some people's insecurities. To begin, I always carry my supply in a little black bag um, and I make sure to keep it in a place where it doesn't get too hot or too cold so that it doesn't compromise my medication. I buy my medication through Strohicker's Pharmacy out of Portland. Other people use a apothecary shop out of Ohio and then there's other people that go through their pharmacies that either do compounding in their own hometowns or pharmacies like Walgreens or one of those big corporate chains. Uh, typically when people use the corporate chain just because they have insurance that covers the injections so they don't pay as much out of pocket and that's why compounding having uh, getting your testosterone through pharmacy actually makes it is more beneficial for people that don't have insurance because it's uh, less expensive and you get more for it I pay about sixty dollars every two months two and a half months for a, a 10 milliliter a vial so that lasts me that time and I do about a hundred milliliters per injection every 10 days so that kind of gives you an idea of how much it, it lasts. If you have a lower dose, then it's going to last longer, just as long as you don't go past the expiration date, uh, which mine is still good. So here's testosterone, and you know, I also have a sterile swab. With the sterile swab, I first wipe the top of the testosterone um, cap, and then I turn it over. Some people use a new one, but I don't really see the need. I don't think it's necessary. I turn it over, and I wipe and sterilize where I'll be injecting which I always gauge by taking my middle finger and then my thumb and spreading it across and hitting there. That's about the midpoint between your hip bone and your knee to do your injection. And I do it right here on the side. Some people will do it on the top. I do it at an angle on the side. Some people will go this way. Um, I always say listen to your doctor or nurse practitioner and the technique that they show you. This is just a technique that works for me, but that may mean that it doesn't that doesn't mean that it works for everybody. Next, I pull out my sterile swab or sterile syringe. I screw down the 18 gauge cap, and this is what I use to draw the testosterone out of the vial. All right, pull that off. I tip this. I pull down to create a vacuum seal. Push it back in, and then pull it back out, and that easily pulls out this thick, oily component. All right. I do a little bit less than 100 milliliters. Um, ever since I have my histo, I just decrease it just slightly. I don't know if that really makes a difference or not, but I know that my mood is good, my energy is good, uh, so I'm at the right dose. My health is good, my blood, my labs all come back great. After you get done drawing it, I pull it away so that I don't lose any of the testosterone, and then I unscrew this needle, and I throw that into my sterile tub right here. All right, and then I pull out this one, which is a 21 ga or 22 gauge, one inch uh, needle, and I screw that on tight. I used to do a 22 gauge inch and a half, and after a while, I realized that I really didn't need to have that long of a needle. And I didn't understand why I kept poking myself with such a long a needle because my I can see where my muscles at in my leg, and so I've switched to the one inch, which makes this a lot easier. So I screw that down, I pull off the cap, and then I push the, the uh, testosterone back up into the needle. Alright, and I push it there, I flick it, I don't think it really makes a difference. My idea of getting air bubbles off, I must watch too many movies with maybe drug users that do that, right? Uh, and then I measure again where I'm going to be injecting. And then I look to make sure I don't see any blue veins. Um, I just do that. I don't know if it really makes a difference or not. I just think that hurts less when I do that. I squeeze my muscle then. It's called the Z technique. I 
put the needle in, aspirate it, make sure there's any blood in there, which there never has been. Again, I've been do I've probably done over 300 shots now, and then push the oil in. The oil's thick, and so it may take a little bit to get in, but it will move. You just have to be patient and remember to breathe. All right, this is always weird to do on camera. Some people do it a stabby method. I go a little bit slower. I am aspirating, and then I inject. Today is a day where it's going a little slower. pressure, rub it out, then I grab the cap again, I cap that off, I twist off the needle, and I put it back into the red biohazard container. It's really important that you don't just throw those away. Uh, put those in biohazard con containers. If there's any blood in here, that's fine to throw in the trash with a syringe, but never put needles in your trash, please. Uh, you can drop those off sometimes, like pharmacies like Walmart. We'll take them, drop them off after you've filled it. I've been filling this one for a long time now. And just make sure to stay safe um, and keep other people safe and pets and children. So keep them away from your needles that have been in your leg and exposed to your blood. So that's it. That's how you do an injection. Uh, I hope this helped. Sorry this one took a little bit longer and I apologize for barking animals. They always seem to bark whenever I talk on the phone or doing a video. Uh, Enjoy the rest of your day. If you have questions, just post them underneath this video and I'll try to answer them when I have time. Thank you.